Well, I'm excited to share with you my newest book, uh, 51 More K-12 Art Lessons, uh, Creative Differentiated Art Explorations. So this is the editing copy. So Lee Sanders is my editor. She goes through to make sure that everything looks good. And we've got little notes in here, but at least you get to see the content of the book. So we have 50 lessons, and the idea is that each lesson is broken down um, from advanced extensions, high school, middle school, elementary, and then lower elementary. I really believe it's important that all students in your class are able to have a similar experience. So if you're teaching in the high school level, but maybe you have a special needs student who comes in with an aid, they can do the elementary version of the same lesson. Um, so this will go through and give you lots of neat ideas about collage. Um, we've got clay projects in here, um, printing. So I do a coral reef lesson that's in here, um, doing lunches in, this, in the form of different artists throughout history. And you can actually copy this page and make it available to students so that they can make a milk carton in the style of a different artist. Uh, and I even have some posters. Actually, I made this book at eight and a half by 11 inches so that you can cut the spine, put this in a binder, and you can make copies with your purchase. So we've got portraits, uh, we've got wind sculptures uh, in here. Um, again, simplified for lower elementary and made more challenging for our upper uh, level students. Origami color wheels, this lesson went viral uh, all through the internet and I've got detailed directions on how to do this. Um, for your high school students as a painting lesson and maybe elementary students as a drawing lesson with uh, color pastels. We've got names in foreign languages, which is really fun to do, or doing the names of other teachers in the school. We've got texture paintings that I went through and then also how to do texture printing with your lower elementary students. I call this squish face uh, monoprints. So we show how to use acrylic plates and rubbing alcohol to make prints of faces. Um, soft sculptures with animals uh, to show maybe recycling with different kinds of fabrics and yarns, which is an awful lot of fun. And we have lots of more pictures in this book to kind of show you the in-between steps and the different possibilities that you have with these lessons. This is called Inside Outside, where we have a sculpture and a box. The inside of the box tells us who you really are. The outside of the box is how people perceive you to be. And there's even some worksheets that you can use with your students where they can reflect on what they know about themselves and what they assume uh, other people's assume about them. Um, we've got animals and patterns, looking at Alibrija sculptures from Mexico. Um, and then some examples. And I actually use plaster and then put tissue over top of that and then use paint pens to put patterns on there. Uh, music illustrations, using music as a bridge. Uh, and then the same thing in other languages. So you can look at um, music from, you know, Spanish music, French music, uh, Chinese music, or even students can tie it into their own personal culture and create illustrations for music. Then along with music, looking at it as abstract expressionism and how you could use color and shape to represent music. Uh, and they can create these wonderful abstract works of art. And then we always tie in literacy with all of the lessons. So there's gonna be a writing component that you can use if you'd like to. Chuck Close Portraits, uh, how we can do that. And piggy banks that represent how you'd like to save up money for a particular thing. If it's for uh, raising money for cancer, raising money for a career in the FBI, getting some money for a car, these can be a lot of fun. Collage explorations based on the work of Romare Bearden. And then again, we have another handout that students can use to kind of reflect on their own cultures and then come up with some ideas for lessons that they wanna do. Uh, here's a sculpture lesson that ties in with the library, which is a lot of fun. Uh, tessellations that are done without a grid. Uh, imagining the future, we found some prints done of what people thought the year 2000 would look like back in the 1800s. So that becomes what you would think of will be in maybe the 3000s, you know, what's gonna be ahead of us. Using cartooning uh, to teach uh, concepts, tie dyeing and staining, uh, more face portraits and how you can manipulate the face and then come up with some interesting ideas. Um, Paul Klee printing and blind printing. We have some interesting lessons there. Uh, and blind drawing, creating lanterns based on cultures. And then our younger kids can take this handout and then decorate and design 
a lantern for their own culture, treasure maps, which can be a lot of fun. Um, and we, you can see that they're in the shape of something. So this is a duck. Um, and then story time illustrations, we use the Jabberwock as our sample, but you could use almost any uh, literature connection. Doing murals within your school with your students. Um, using uh, pixel portraits and post-it notes. Uh, these are an awful lot of fun and they even provide a grid that you can copy and photocopy faces onto that if you'd like to. Uh, inventing your own art supplies. Here my younger students um, are actually making charcoal. We use a candle and a stick and they burn that stick and we have buckets of water right next to them in case the fire goes a little bit out of control. They just throw the stick into the water. Um, but we do it very safely with lots of uh, supervision. Uh, wire sculptures that are based on food and hunger. Uh, we can continue on with altered books where they do five chapters about important sections of their life and we go on and on. So there's going to be 2D, uh, 3D lessons, uh, lots of color illustrations in here. And then in the back of the book, um, we have uh, some grading rubrics available to you. So we've got lower elementary grading rubrics, a simple rubric, a more complex rubric, rubrics where the students assess themselves. Uh, and then we finish with um, some mid-project peer reviews, some project reflections that students can use about their work, uh, and then over a hundred sketchbook ideas. So when you're looking for ideas for what students should do uh, when they finish a project early, we've got about 180 ideas here for you. So um, if you're interested, you can get a great price on Amazon for this book. Thank you so much and have a great day.